Scorpius. What is something scary that has happened to you that you cannot explain rationally? Part 6. Sit back, relax, and soak it all in. If you like what you hear, hit subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your crew. Count 1. When I was a little girl, my grandma frequently would take me to antique shops with her. Usually, we just looked and learned about the items. But one of the times, she bought me a pair of twin dolls that I fell in love with. One was a boy and one was a girl. They were extremely old and their skin was made of what the shopkeeper called the first plastic ever made. I'm not sure of the accuracy of that statement, but anyway, I loved them and played with them daily, always taking care to be gentle so they would stay in decent condition. One evening, I was playing with them and my mom called me down to dinner. I tucked the little boy doll underneath my covers to put him to bed, kissed him, and ran downstairs. I loved him especially because I never had a boy doll before. After dinner, I went back upstairs to play in my room. Forgetting that he was tucked under my covers, I took a running leap and belly flopped on my bed. Underneath the covers came a loud, long, mechanical-sounding voice that yelped painfully, Mama! I pulled the covers back to find my boy doll, and I was perplexed because I had never known him to have a voice box. I squeezed him again several times in varying degrees to get him to say it again, and nothing happened. I calmly asked my mom if she could get his voice box to work and explained what happened. She and my dad both tried and nothing worked. He stayed quiet. As an adult, I haven't been able to get him to work again. I posted this picture on an antique subreddit under a different account, asking if it would have a voice box, and was told that they were too old to have that feature. I've always wondered about this. Also, the doll's skin has deteriorated now, leaving them mostly armless. On a side note that is probably unrelated, when I was 16, my best friend and I played with a Ouija board at her house. I had long forgotten about my doll and the sound it made, and had only told my parents on the day it happened. We made contact with a young spirit who said he was eight years old. When we asked him how he died, he said he drowned. Suddenly, he moved the planchette to goodbye. We asked him why he was leaving, and he spelled out Rusty. Rusty was the name of my best friend's dog, who had just been led inside by her mom. We told him that it was okay, Rusty was nice, and that he could stay. We asked him a few more questions, and he answered them, but then Rusty walked into the room. The planchette started moving quickly to M, then A, back and forth, spelling Mama, 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 Mama. It wouldn't stop until we lifted our fingers away. Account 2. Before my brother was born, we moved in with my gran into her house, my mother's childhood home, as she had three spare rooms and we were about to outgrow our current house. A good few years on from that, my brother and sister, who were about five and eight, respectively, were both asleep in the room they shared, and I went in and opened their window as it had been a really hot day, and being in the UK, we don't have aircon. A good few hours later, I came back into the room as I figured it might have gotten cooler and I didn't want my bro and sis being too cold. I gently woke up my sister asking if she wanted me to shut the window, and that's when the bedroom light flickered on. I didn't think much of it, shut the window, and the light flickered on again. That's when I thought it was a bit odd, as I've seen lights flicker off and on while switched on, but never on when a light was switched off. The next day, I mentioned this to my mother, and her face just went chalk white. Her brother, my uncle, died in that room of an asthma attack, and she desperately tried to save his life that night, unfortunately to no avail. But the night of the flickering light was the same day as the anniversary of his death. It never freaked me out, but I found it quite comforting thinking he's in a way watching over us. Account 3. Years ago, I lived in an older house downtown with a roommate. We both played guitar and had a nice setup in the basement. On the wall was an old mirror that was affixed to the wall. It was there when we moved in. One day, I came home and noted my roommate wasn't there when he was supposed to be. I went to the basement and started playing guitar. Something caught the corner of my eye in the mirror. I turned to look and saw what I can only explain as a cloud rising. I looked to the other side of the room and saw no explanation for this at all. It scared me so much that I immediately put the guitar down, went upstairs, and left the house. I went to the local cafe to chill till my roommate came home. Strangely, I found him there. He looked pale and stressed. He started telling me about the cloudy ghost he saw in the basement mirror about two hours earlier. I just about shat my pants. Account 4. I'm late, unfortunately, but maybe this will be seen by some 
The summer after my freshman year in college, I got a missions internship that involved me, F, 19 at the time living in a church with one other person, M, 25 at the time while working in an underserved community in Kentucky. I had my own sleeping space in the nursery. It was the smallest private room on the main floor adjacent to the sanctuary. From the first night I was there, I was really on edge when I was alone in this room. I assumed I was being silly and was just nervous about being in an unfamiliar place PNW native, never been anywhere near the south before, but I couldn't sleep at night. I lit candles and listened to music to try to soothe the anxiety, but I slept maybe four hours a night the first week. The second week, I wore headphones to try to fall asleep, and I had the worst dream I have ever had in my life. I was in a dark room under a spotlight, and I was sitting in a chair facing my boyfriend. We were having a conversation about something random, and I looked away for a split second. When I turned back to him, his demeanor was entirely different. He was sitting in his chair, very slump-like, relaxed, chin tilted down and looking up at me through the top of his eyes, grinning. He looked seriously evil, and I remember being paralyzed with fear, the most afraid of anything I have ever been. I was sure in that moment that he was going to hurt me, torture me almost. And then I thought, this is a dream, you're not real. This is a dream, you can't hurt me. And then he turned into sand and fell in a pile on the chair and floor, and I immediately woke up crying. The next day, I told my co-worker about this dream, thinking he might say something reassuring like, dreams are so weird that's creepy. Instead, he got super spiritual on me and said, I know this sounds strange, but I really feel like you should pay attention to that. I was annoyed at him, but I decided not to sleep in the nursery anymore and camped out in the massive sanctuary. I never had another nightmare while I was there. However, this boyfriend of mine became extremely psychologically abusive within months of me returning home, and I ended up with a restraining order a year later. I don't consider myself to be a very spiritual person anymore, but part of me wonders whether that dream was a sign from somewhere, or my subconscious picking up something I didn't yet know about him, or just a strange coincidence. Account 5. This will probably get buried, but I'll still share it. One night when I was home for school, I was chilling in my little brother's room around 2 a.m. I was pretty baked, but still clear-headed, and I decided to go downstairs to the kitchen to get something to eat. I put my clothes on, opened the door, and turned right to head down the stairs. I looked down the hallway toward the staircase and saw this picture looking right back at me. I know for a fact that there was nothing in that spot that I could have mistaken for a dark figure with bright eyes. So I paused, stared for a second, and considered how much I wanted that snack. In the end, I simply said, nope, sheepishly to myself, and went back in the room and shut the door till morning. I've never seen anything like it since then, but it still kind of freaks me out when I think about it. Account six, I was on my way to the choir performance I had in a town on the other side of the country. I had to catch the sound check session because if you're not there, you don't perform later, rules of the choir. I'm running a bit late. So I'm driving just a bit over the speed limit, 130 kilometer h here, about 80 mapis seats. But the road is almost completely empty, so I figured it's okay, even though it was raining quite heavily. When I was merging onto the highway, I overtook a car that kind of stuck out from the rest. It was a dark green rover with a Bosnian license plate, very rare in my country, and a little sticker in the back that looked like a logo of a flight club or school. It was a very specific combination. I'm driving on the right lane when a dark green rover passes me. It caught my attention because I was driving pretty fast and I wanted to see who was in such a hurry to overtake me as I was overtaking every other driver I encountered on my way so far. Okay, so the guy just caught up and passed me. I don't know why, but I remembered the last three numbers of his plate and I still do, won't share. A couple of kilometers down the road, I see a pair of lights approaching in my rear mirror, so I move to the right again. When it passes, it was the same car, same plates, same sticker, same brand and color. And then this happened two more times, the last time was a bit freaky. I saw someone beginning to pass me and I thought, hello Rover, and there he was. Two of the times it happened on a stretch that had no stops or exits, so I don't know how this happened and I never once overtook him, except at the beginning. But here comes the good part. I'm driving back from the concert. It's pretty late and the rain is pouring like hell, so visibility is bad. 
I was slowly driving home and the same car passed me twice. I tried to snap a picture I was expecting the second time, but the first time freaked me the fuck out. But the rain and a shitty phone didn't add up well. Account 7. A couple of years back, a friend and I were driving home from work, late at night, and saw the whole weird lights in the sky thing. They did the whole impossible flight path and pattern. We didn't say anything to each other for five minutes after until he spoke and said, Did, uh, you see anything weird back at the last highway exit? Since then, we've always kind of kept it to ourselves because it sounds dumb as hell. Anytime I drive near that exit, I always think about it. Account 8. No one believes that I didn't somehow mistakenly do this myself. You know the pictures that are on your computer when you get it to use as wallpaper or screensavers? When I got my computer, it was set up to do a slideshow of these pictures. I glanced at my screen and there was a picture of me at the circus sitting with a group of clowns. Now that picture does exist. It was taken at the Shrine Circus about five years before that. I do not know where the hard copy is. I never gave a copy to anyone. I never scanned it into my computer. I didn't know how to do that when it was taken. No one sent or was sent that picture over the internet. No one with access to my computer knows how to scan a pic into a file. It freaked me out, so I deleted it from the file. Two days later, it was back. I deleted it again and it was gone, but left a close-up of one of the clowns, the one that was sitting to the left of me. I've since gotten Windows 10 and I haven't seen the picture, but I can't find anything on Windows 10, so I'm still uneasy. Account 9. I was a cop for a few years in the Miami metro area in my early 20s. About a month after completing my field training program, I got dispatched to an industrial silent alarm call in a pretty rough neighborhood. Alarm calls were pretty routine, but always kept us on our toes, as the suspect could range from faulty wiring to a 6'5 naked dude on PCP trying to pry some copper. I'm on the scene within a couple of minutes of getting the call. Lo and behold, my old field training officer, a sergeant, and her new trainee pull up. By this time, the alarm company had notified the owner, who provided dispatch with a code to enter a side door with an electric keypad. My sergeant had the rookie watch the front of the warehouse while me and her made entry through that side door. We have our guns and lights out and start sweeping up and down the aisles, which were about 25 feet high and filled with old electronics and furniture mostly. We can't find any light switches, so we continue sweeping with our lights. Just as we had almost finished clearing the warehouse, we heard very fast footsteps from the opposite side. We start jogging our way there, yelling out, police, come out, and the like. We come to where we thought we heard the footsteps when my sergeant suddenly spun around. She later said she saw a flash in her peripheral vision and ducked around to the other side of the warehouse shelf. No one's there. We start creeping back out towards where we came from to wait for K-9 when we hear a fucking high-pitched giggle from right behind us. Like imagine the most stereotypical little girl in a horror movie giggle. We spin around and both light up a four-foot little girl with black hair down to her butt sprinting down the aisle the opposite way. She had to have appeared out of thin air because we were both scared as shit by this point and our senses were at 110% and we completely missed her. We naturally holstered our guns and gave chase. Here's the thing. Neither of us could catch her. My sergeant wasn't particularly fast, and I wasn't a track star, but both of us were surely capable of catching a small child. Nope. Turn a corner, she'd be ten feet further up the aisle than where she was before she turned the corner. Within twenty seconds, we lose her completely. At that point, we both went outside and waited for more units to come. The property owner gets there along with about five other units and a K-9, and we re-enter. The owner turns on the lights and we search the entire place, top to bottom. Nothing is stolen and the girl cannot be found anywhere. Again, impossible. As all the entries were both locked from the inside and padlocked on the outside, and we had officers covering the entire exterior, there's just no possible way that a child could have been in there without us finding her. My sergeant was extremely Catholic and swears up and down that it was either a demon or a lost spirit. I think I might have to agree. Account 10. My mom passed away 20 months ago now. About four months after she died, my son, who was just learning to talk, would keep babbling away into the phone in his funny toddler twin language. When I asked him who he was talking to, he replied, Nanny. 
I nearly fell over the first time it happened, but didn't say anything or make a big deal. He continually did this almost daily for months. My husband and I also observed him walking past some stereo speakers in our lounge, and he stops and puts his ear to the speaker for like 30 seconds. I said, what are you listening to? Nanny, he replied and walked off with a happy smile. This all stopped a while ago now, though, and no more mentions of Nanny at all. Weird. But actually comforting. It's funny because my husband was always joking and saying to Mom, you better send me a sign from the other side when you're gone so we know you're okay. She had had a long-term illness. Account 11. I was driving home from dropping my girlfriend off at work last April. It was 5 a.m. and storming. Down the road, I saw this brilliant blue light. I got up to the source of it. And it's just this big ball of electricity floating in the middle of the intersection with tendrils of energy radiating into the air. It slowly floated up after a minute and sort of evaporated. Now, the rational explanation would be that I witnessed ball lightning, but it seemed almost intelligent somehow. Whatever it was doing, I got the impression that I interrupted it. Also, I don't recall seeing the traffic lights functioning at the time, but I might have just not been paying attention to them. Nobody ever believes me, but that's my story. Account 12. My mother and stepfather lived in a house in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, and when my children and my nieces and nephews visited, they didn't like the area to the rear of the house. There was a bathroom and two bedrooms back there where guests stayed. Our dogs didn't like that area either. My mother jokingly bought a Ghostbusters sign and told the kids it had been ghost busted, but the kids were dubious. A few years later, my mom and stepdad got into a big fight and he went to the guest area to sleep for a few days. One night, he felt something on the bed and thought it was my mother. It wasn't. It was a ghost, a woman in a nightgown. He said he didn't feel threatened. It was as if she was checking on someone or maybe checking on kids. He was British, an engineer, and very stiff upper lip and not prone to stories or hallucinations. So did the kids and the dogs pick up on a presence? It seems likely. Account 13. I was lying in bed on a Saturday morning. My bed is positioned so that if my bed is at the southwest corner of a rectangle, then the door to my bedroom is at the northeast corner. I lay in bed with my head facing the door. The door is at one end of the hallway. The other end of the hallway is the stairs leading down. Anyways, it's Saturday morning. I'm laying there half asleep. I hear my mom finish up chores, breakfast downstairs. She's getting ready to leave for work and yells up the stairs goodbye to me. My door is open, so I mumble something back. She exits through the front door and leaves. A few minutes later, I hear the front door open again. Oh, my mom must have forgot something. She does that a lot. I hear her walking throughout the house downstairs. When you live in a house your whole life, you start getting used to people walking around the house, where they're walking, and what they're sort of doing. Anyways, she's walking around and then starts walking upstairs. She's at one end of the hallway now, stopped. Then she starts walking towards my end of the hallway and stops. I call out, Mom? No answer. At this point, I'm thinking, oh, crap. Maybe it's a burglar who waited for my mom to leave. I'm dead. I call out again, Mom? No answer. At this point, I jolt up out of bed and run to my door. I look down the hallway. Nothing. I search the other rooms. Nothing. Account 14. I was playing with my phone around 2 a.m. when suddenly I heard a guy from outside my window saying, Hey boy, what are you doing? I was so scared and quickly hid under my blanket and just tried to sleep. During breakfast the next morning, I told my parents what happened. My mom said she went to get a glass of water in the kitchen around the same time I heard the voice. When she heard someone calling her using her nickname and asked how she's doing, she said she drank the water and quickly went back to bed. After listening to both me and my mom's stories, my dad went pale and said that he had a nightmare that very same night. In his nightmare, he saw a hooded man walking toward our house which was on fire and my sister was on the balcony screaming for help. The man turned around and smiled at my dad saying that he's here to visit my mom and I, my dad, woke up right after that. We ate breakfast in silence that morning. Account 15. No one will read this but when my best friend's grandmother died, I spent the night at her house. The next morning we were at the kitchen table about to eat breakfast and talking about her grandmother when a mug on the table moved several inches straight and then stopped. We both looked at each other and confirmed that we saw what we did. I've always been super critical and skeptical, so I checked the table for watermarks from condensation. 
even strings and magnets. Nothing. Then my friend said, my grandma gave me that cup. Also the watch I have. My grandpa gave it to me. It used to be my grandma's and they were cleaning out the house because grandma was moving into assisted living. It's a beautiful, delicate gold watch with a small diamond on the watch face. Two years ago, the watch stopped, and when I noticed, the first thing I thought was, something's wrong with Grandpa. He died two weeks later. I got the watch fixed when I was back in the States. A week and a half ago, it stopped again. I got a call this morning that my grandma had a stroke and likely won't live to the weekend. You can bet I'm hanging on to that watch. But if anyone can explain why this keeps happening, I'd love to hear it.